In this video, we will discuss the differences between fusion welding and solid state welding. So, the very first difference in fusion welding processes, fang surface of the base component melt down to form the weld bead. So, here you can see the fusion welding process. So, in fusion welding process, the heat is applied externally by a suitable heat source to melt the fang surface of the base component to get the weld bead. Now the solid state welding. No such melting takes place. Temperature of the fang surfaces always remains below the melting point of the parent metal. So here you can see an example of solid state welding. This is a friction stir welding process. So in case of solid state welding process, the melting of the component or the melting of the fang surface do not takes place and the temperature of the fang surface always remains below the melting point of the parent component. Next point, heat is directly applied from some external means, however pressure is not necessary. So in case of fusion welding process, the heat is applied by a suitable external source. That may be, that heat may be applied with a suitable flame or it may be applied with the help of arc or it may be applied with the help of laser or electron beam. So heat is directly applied from some external means. However, pressure is not necessarily required. Okay, Sometimes the pressure is applied or sometimes the pressure is not applied. Now the solid state welding. No heat is directly applied to assist the joining. Instead, sufficient pressure is applied in most of the cases. So in case of solid state welding, no heat is directly applied over the fang surface. Whereas the pressure is applied and as a consequence of pressure, the heat is generated and that heat is utilized to join the two base components. Next point, external filler material if required can be applied. So in case of fusion welding process, the external filler material is applied if it is required. Okay, so on the basis of application of filler, we can classify the welding process in three category. That is autogenous welding homogeneous welding and heterogeneous welding. In case of autogenous welding, the external filler material is not applied during the welding process. In case of homogeneous welding, the composition of the filler material is compatible with the composition of the parent metal. And in case of heterogeneous welding, the composition of the filler material is substantially different from the composition of the base metal. So, in case of fusion welding, the external filler material is applied if it is required. So if the gap in between the two component to be joined is more, in that case the filler material is requ required to fill the root gap. Now solid state welding. Solid state welding process are mostly autogenous and also the filler metal cannot be applied easily. Now the solid state welding process are autogenous in nature. That means the filler material is not applied in most of the solid state welding process. And even it is, it is difficult to use the filler metal in case of solid state welding process. Next point, broader heat affected zone exists surrounding the weld bead because of the high heat input. So here in this diagram, the heat affected zone is shown with the help of a low color. Now, as the heat is applied externally and due to which the melting takes place. After melting, the metal gets solidified to get the weld joint. So, due to the heating above its melting point, the property of the base component get also changed. And the region in which the property of the component, the base component changes, that region is known as heat affected zone. So, in case of fusion welding process, broader heat affected zone exists surrounding the weld bead. Now, the solid state welding. Heat affected zone is narrow as no melting occurs. In most cases, heat affected zone is negligible and the processes no problem on the possesses no problem on the welded structure. Now, in case of solid state welding process, the heat is not applied by the external source. Okay. Instead of that, the pressure is applied and whatever heat is generated during the process that is well below the melting point of the base component and hence the melting do not takes place. And as the melting do not takes place, the heat affected zone is very narrow as compared to the 
fusion welding processes and even in some process the heat affected zone is negligible next point due to intense heating and subsequent melting various mechanical and metallurgical properties are affected in fusion welding so as we have already discussed in case of fusion welding the heat is applied externally by a suitable heat source and due to which the melting takes place and due to the melting of the base component the properties of the base component also changes okay and it also affects the metallurgical and mechanical properties of the overall component no solid state welding mechanical and metallurgical properties are not affected severely so in case of solid state welding no melting takes place and that is why the mechanical and metallurgical properties of the base component do not change next point dissimilar metal joining by fusion welding is easier so in case of fusion welding the dissimilar metal joining is easy and the welding process is known or uh, welding process is one of the best welding process uh, one of the best joining process because we are getting a leak proof and sound joint okay and uh, we are getting a leak proof and sound joint for dissimilar metals also but it is very important to choose a proper welding parameters while handling the dissimilar metals now solid state welding dissimilar metal joining by solid state welding is very difficult so in case of solid state welding the dissimilar of the dissimilar metal joining is very difficult next point high distortion takes place because of excessive heat input proper fixture must be employed to avoid it now as in fusion welding process the heat is applied externally and the melting takes place and after melting the solidification also takes place so the metal first expand and then contract and due to which the internal residual stresses are generated in a weld component and hence proper fixture must be employed to avoid the distortion of the welded structure now solid state welding level of distortion is low and usually does not require precautions to avoid it so in case of solid state welding no heat is applied externally and there is no melting and hence no sudden expansion and contraction takes place okay so level of distortion is very low and usually does not require uh, the fixture heavy fixtures to avoid the distortion next point all arc welding gas welding resistance welding and intense energy welding processes are the fusion welding process so the example of fusion welding is the arc welding like the tungsten arc welding manual metal arc welding then gas metal arc welding then flux core arc welding these are nothing but the types of arc welding then the gas welding like oxyacetylene welding then the resistance welding and intense energy welding processes like the laser beam welding electron beam welding these are nothing but the examples of fusion welding processes now the example of solid state welding that is diffusion welding pressure welding roll welding cold welding friction welding forge welding these are some examples of solid state welding so i hope you understood the difference between fusion welding and solid state welding thank you so much for watching my video